Okay, welcome to part 6, and hopefully this will be the final part uh, of this tutorial series. Um, this is the point we got up to in the last video. We had uh, successfully um, created, sort of made up the HTTP request headers that we are going to send. Uh, what we have to do now is, well, send them. Um, this is quite a simple, easy thing to do. Um, what we need to do is open a socket, um, write the headers to it, uh, then get the contents of said socket and return that. So it's pretty simple. PHP basically has three functions that we need to use here. So we're going to delete this because that's what we're going to be sending. Um, and we're going to open a new socket and just put it in the socket variable and make that equal to f soc open. This function um, takes two parameters, well, two sort of required parameters. The first one is the host, the sort of IP address or domain name of the server you want to open a connection to. In this case it's going to be URL host. Whoops. Host. The second one is the port that you want to open it to. Now the pass URL function um, will have a port sort of key element in its array that it returns if the port is not 80. So what we want to do here is use a ternary operator. Um, this hi also highlights a very sort of key advantage of using these ternary operators is that you can use them in function arguments. So inside this port argument, we want to check if um, we want to do a check for um, something, and then sort of well there you go. That's the basic ternary operator. So in the check is going to be is set URL port. And if it is set, uh, hang on, I need a little bracket there. If it is set, we want to use it. So I'm going to define that there. URL port, not post, port, port. Uh, and if it's not, we're going to default to 80. So now what we're doing here is it's sort of the same as if you like wrap the whole thing in an if statement, but it's sort of ne neater because in one line and you can do it in line like that. So you could change the host without having to change it twice. Uh, so that's what we're doing there to open the socket. And now we need to write the header to that socket. Um, you can treat a socket basically like a file, an open file resource, not a file. You can't use file put contents with it. Um, if you think you can, you can't. You need to use fwrite, which is the PHP function which writes to an open file resource. So we just call that like so, fwrite takes two parameters. The first one is the resource that you want to write to, which in our case is socket, and the second one is the string you want to um, send, um, which is going to be the uh, head variable followed by the post variable. So we're just going to um, join those together inside a string. So we're going to have head then post. So head goes here and post goes here, like so. Uh, that's basically what we output to the screen previously. I showed it in my view source window. So now if I do, oh okay, uh, the way you get the response from a socket after you've written to it is using the stream get contents function. Very similar to the file get contents function except it takes a open socket resource and it returns its um, returns its sort of contents, its entire contents. Um, before we send the headers there won't be any contents so it will only return like the response that the server sends back after we've sent these headers. So I'll just demonstrate that by doing echo stream get contents uh, of socket. And then if we go back to here, see we're calling this blah blah blah, good good good. So if I do now reload this page, you see we get this thing. If I just view the page source, it'll make a bit more sense. So these are the headers that our server is sending back, just this bit here. Um, so it's sending a HTTP 1 200 OK status message, sending the time, the type of server, the PHP version, content length, uh, blah blah blah, the content type which we set with PHP, remember. Um, and it's also sending this JSON string. Now this is the only po part we want, we don't want any of these like headers. Um, you see here also that the header is ended with a double new line. 
So we're going to use that fact to extract this final thing because we know our string won't, our JSON string will never contain any new lines, definitely not any double new, like RNs, RNs, carried to return new line twice. Um, so we can just sort of extract everything following that using a very simple little snippet. Um, and what we're going to do, the way we're going to do this is using the explode function. So we're going to explode this into an array. I've mentioned this before, so I won't go into too much detail. And what we're going to be exploding on is slash r slash n slash r slash n. Which, if you recall from my previous video in this tutorial series, um, always signifies the end of sort of headers. So if we just do uh, print underscore r of this and hit reload. Oh, and view the page source. You see now we have an array with two elements. In the first element here are the headers, and in the second element is the bit we want, the actual JSON raw resp response. I almost said response. <laughs> anyway, um, so the way we get the last element in this array is just using the end function. And if I now echo this and hit reload, you see we just get the response from our server. So this isn't including the file directly, it's just send, it's sending post data, like sort of faking a form submission in a way. Okay, so what we want to do is just return this, instead of echoing it directly to the screen, because obviously we can't use it very well then. So now we reload this page, we get nothing. Um, so now we have this lookup function, which needs to process the response from the server. So like, say if I do just echo here, I know that's a little bit pointless, but you see we get the same response for out. Uh, if I now return this, um, we'll get the string returned. But what we want to do is decode this JSON string into sort of more a more meaningful array. Luckily again for us, PHP has a JSON decode function. JSON decode. Uh, and you'll see now what I meant about all that object stuff a moment ago. So now if I g now I've returned this JSON the result of this JSON decode. Uh, the response we previously ex dis expl eh, sorry, explained. So let's just go here and do print underscore r of the result of that function call, which will be a, well, as you can see, it's a std standard class object. Uh, and what that means is, instead of accessing it as an array, um, you have to access it as a variable, as an object. So say if you did this equal to example instead of accessing example URL you would have to access example URL like that as an object as object oriented orientated programming uh, in this case we don't want to do that because we want to keep things as simple as possible let's just add the print underscore R back uh, example like so, reload this, see the same thing comes up. What we want to do is have this converted to an array. Again, uh, PHP's JSON decode function comes to our rescue because if you set the second parameter of it to true, it will convert the result to an array. So now we get the standard, easy to work with, friendly result, which is just an array containing two parameters. The first one is nothing, and the second one is the key which we supplied, which was zero. If I supply the key as one, I believe, you see we get uh, the URL out as Google, so we could like header location this result um, based on something in the URL, like we did um, with the go.php file in the URL shortening tutorial. So that's pretty much it for that function. Um, not going to demonstrate it too much because I want to move on to the next one. Uh, basically, we want to do the same thing here, except we want to send a shorten request, not a lookup request. So what we're going to do here is, uh, okay, let's take it from the inside. I'm going to call the um, send post data function, um, and we're going to give it the URL that we've supplied. And with this, um, no, wait, no, we're not. <laughs> we're going to give it an array of post data. And that post data is going to be the shorten. So the name of the sort of theoretical form is going to be shorten form input, sorry. Uh, and the thing, its value is going to be URL. 
and then with this we want to JSON decode it decode like so um, and we'll just set the second parameter to true again just to make sure we get an array back and we're just going to return this let's well return right and that's it for our client side API so uh, we can test this shorten function now because I've got some spare minutes um, go to our test page change this to shorten uh, and if I reload this um, oh, I've called it date again silly silly okay data if I reload this you see we get oh actually tell you what let's just add some pre tags to make this look a bit nicer uh go back to our test page and just above here we're gonna do echo pre and then after this we're gonna do echo the closing tag. The reason I'm doing it in PHP instead of outside is because if you do it outside it'll sort of format this white space and it'll look weird. Um, so yeah, that's why. So now we get the URL in sort of, sort of plain text format, if that makes any sense. So you can see how this works now. Um, we're getting this array directly from our URL, like our API. We're not using any functions directly. We're using the access point that we've provided and allowed developers to use. So we're providing this URL. It's not giving us a key because it's wrong. Um, and it's giving us an error message in the errors array, sort of multi-dimensional thing. This itself is an array, uh, and the message is your URL does not appear to be valid. Um, if we supply a valid URL, like Google, google.com, and reload this, you see we don't get any errors. We get the key equals one, because from our database in the URLs table, log back in, Google was in key 1. If we supplied XHCP, it would get key 4. If we supply a new URL, like say if I do google.co.uk, save that page, reload it, we get key 5. And if we go to our table and hit browse, you see we get google.co.uk now in key 5. Um, if we go to our API log, you see we have, oh, the IP address has been, oh, uh, there you go, I've recorded this over two days, that is perfect. Well, the date it's showing the 11th. Okay, hang on. What's happened here? Okay, something is clearly wrong. <laughs> okay, um... Those... Okay, the IP addresses are showing the same. Anyway, um... I'll work that out in a moment and upload a second part to this... To, uh, like a follow-up. Anyway, uh, but you can see the... This is changing. At least. Uh, are they the same? They are, aren't they? Right, um, that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> they were set as unique. Perhaps it's because we're inserting the whole time. But I don't see how that would help make any difference. It's not obviously not doing it all the time. I did record this like an hour ago. Okay, let's try. Let's just make this change and, well, there's no way to test it. Okay, yeah, there is. Let's, let's change this to insert date. Now, so what I'm doing here is editing the API backend file on the URL shortening site. I'm changing what's inserted to the inet add-on function. The second parameter is now date of now, so just the date pub date, date just the date portion. So if I delete one of these and reload our request, it's added it again. That's quite oh, okay. No, the I, the IP address has changed. It must have been different before. <laughs> Apparently, I'm blind. Yeah, of course. Okay, right. Apologize. Um, ignore everything I said about something being wrong. Date is fine here. Uh, basically, um, I made these. Rec I made this first. This request that I've just deleted from my computer, and this one is coming from the server. So completely ignore me. Anyway, you can see that if I just keep reloading this, if I reload it a lot of times, this will increase to seven, and I'm going to have to end this here. Uh, so this is a nice ending. It's working. Uh, so thank you for watching, and sorry about that little stupid bit at the end that I, where I thought it was broken because I couldn't see a difference in numbers. It's quite late. Anyway, thanks for watching, and please watch my next video. <laughs>